What's going on smart people? We've all had these encounters where we run into a friend at the grocery store or we think to check the mail at the exact same time that the mailman comes. I mean, what are the odds of that happening? might not be the right question to ask. In fact, I think it's responsible for people attributing significance to things that really aren't that big of a deal, or there might be some flawed logic in your reasoning. And today I'm gonna to share two points of view as to why that is and give a couple examples. Taking the seeing a friend at the grocery store as an example, asking the right what are the odds question can really shine a light as to why that's not actually significant. If instead you were to ask, <laughs> What are the odds that I run into someone that I know in the town where I live, where most of my friends also live, at the store people visit at least once a week? Well, that's actually not at all surprising. One example that I love that Feynman gave is going into a crowded parking lot and pointing at a random license plate and saying, oh, that license plate says 3QZF89L. I mean, wow, what are the odds of seeing that license plate? That's truly amazing. And when you bring up a silly example like that, it forces you to see that there's something wrong in thinking that way. What are the odds of seeing a random license plate in a crowded parking lot? Quite likely. But fine, if it's not the right question, it's still a question, and the odds of seeing that friend or that particular license plate are sure to be low. So what are we missing? Now I think it's not what's the right question, but when is the right question. Cue Vsauce music. Is there a time you could have asked those questions that would make them significant? How about before it happened? If I were to wake up one morning and say, wouldn't it be weird if I came across a license plate that says 3QZF89L and then saw that license plate? That would be weird and unlikely. What this comes down to, to paraphrase Feynman again, is that we shouldn't verify an idea using the same data that presented the idea in the first place. Physics generally doesn't put much stock in purely ad hoc theories, theories that try to describe one thing that we already know exists and doesn't make any other predictions. Einstein's theory of general relativity predicted this wonky orbit of Mercury after we already knew Mercury had a wonky orbit. But if that's what he set out to do and he predicted nothing else and said, hey guys, I solved the Mercury problem, I got the right trajectory, only thing is that it demands that there's this thing called space-time which curves in the presence of matter, you've got to solve these nasty tensor equations which give a metric which defines the geometry of that new space-time. Also, by the way, gravity's not a force anymore, it's a manifestation of that space-time. But we did it, guys, we got the right trajectory. How do you think that would have gone? No, GR happened to solve the Mercury problem as well as predict the existence of black holes, gravitational waves, and light bending in the presence of matter, all experimentally verified after the fact. So Einstein did it right. Good guy Einstein sounds like a smart cookie. Now it might seem like I went on a bit of a tangent there going from the probability of seeing your friend at the grocery store to black holes and gravitational waves, but what I'm trying to do is demonstrate that there's a helpful way of approaching problems. He didn't say, here's this phenomenon that we observe but we don't understand, let me create this strict mathematical framework that only describes that. Does it end up describing that thing I'm forcing it to describe? Yes? Then I must be right. It's the same logic as attributing significance to something that would have been interesting if it were predicted or discussed a priori. Now don't get me wrong, any theory is going to have some kind of ad hocness in it because there's something that you do set out to describe. But what makes them more rich is when they make other testable predictions. If such and such does behave this way, then I predict that you will observe this. Here experimentalists, go look for that or conclude that that does not appear to exist and present evidence against my theory. So this kind of reasoning is a safe bet because it provides a sense of check and balance. If this, then this. If not this, then I'm wrong. That the other kind sort of lends itself to circular reasoning, which is very dangerous. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments section if you did, and I'll see you guys there.